lot of challenges to go to outer space, extreme space environments, radiation, entry, descent, and landing, lightweight vehicles and structures. Every time we overcome a new challenge, we learn something new, new science, new engineering, and new materials. So today, I have the opportunity to tell you about a new material with great potential, boron nitride nanotube. Meet BNNT. It's made up of alternating boron and nitrogen atoms. It's one to two nanometers in diameter and very long. BNNT is 10,000 times thinner than a human hair. It resists heat up to 900 degrees C. Aluminum melts much lower than that. BNNT is strong, 100 times stronger than steel, but only weighs one-sixth what steel weighs. BNNT is an insulator, so it doesn't conduct electricity. And it absorbs neutrons very well, so good for radiation protection. Even though people have been working on BNNT since 1994, it's been very difficult to make very pure, high quality, highly crystalline materials until we discovered a method in our laboratory that uses high pressure and high temperature. So how about we make some BNNTs? So what do we need to make BNNTs? We need a high pressure chamber, we need nitrogen gas, we need boron target, we use a boron rod. We need a high powered laser, maybe one that cuts through steel that they use in industry, that works very well. You have a boron rod, Laser beam comes in, 4,000 degrees C, white hot. Melts the boron, forms molten boron. Reacts with the nitrogen, forms BNNTs. We catch the BNNTs on a wire. Sometimes we catch them on a mesh. Let's open the chamber. Oh my, they're white. Nanotubes usually aren't white. They're cotton-like, they're fluffy. They look like pulp from textile industry. This is about 30 minutes of trying to make BNNTs, fits in the palm of your hand. That's a blue glove in the, in the lab. And very unexpected that they're, they're white, they're fluffy. We can maybe do something out of them, like spin a yarn. So imagine going into a jar of nanotubes, one to two nanometers in diameter, 10,000 times thinner than just one strand of my hair and spinning them with your hands. This means they're very long and they're aligned. So this is very good property. And so we also catch them on a mesh. So this is, if you pull out your Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass, look at the BNNTs. This is millions and millions of bundles of tubes. So if I want to stop things from going through this, bad things, contaminants, this might make for a good filter. What about other properties? How about can BNNT withstand the heat? Yes, absolutely. Take a BNNT film, pick it up with a pair of tweezers, light it with a torch. Propane torch in the lab, 1600 degrees C. Doesn't burn, doesn't char, good flame resistance. So this is gonna come in handy when we go to space. This is what entry, descent, and landing looks like. So this is a space vehicle coming back through the atmosphere, very hot. But if we wanna send something into space, we wanna see how it works on Earth. That's the best way. And so we build these facilities and say, we're gonna simulate what's up there down here. So we have a hypersonic thermal test facility. So the BNNTs, we're gonna put them in the chamber. We're gonna fly them at Mach 5, very hot simulate the planetary environment and see if the BNNTs survive. And I'll tell you ahead of time, the BNNTs survive with minimal damage. So that's a nanotube, well, millions of bundles of nanotubes going Mach 5. So if you're talking to your neighbor, say, I saw a nanotube go Mach 5 today. It was pretty cool and it made it. So that's really good. One of the biggest showstoppers of sending humans into Mars is radiation. So we need to protect them from the radiation environment. That's neutrons, cosmic rays, solar energetic particles. If we want, we know BNNT absorbs neutrons very well, so this is good. Other types of energetic radiations, we need to have small atoms. So the smaller the atoms, like boron and nitrogen, 
the more chance of we can diminish the radiation effects. But we're not the first ones to explore. Vikings were exploring over a thousand years ago. Vikings made their boats strong and lightweight so that when they went off to explore other lands and to bring back goods, they could bring more stuff back. So weight and volume really matter to the Vikings. Weight and volume really matters to NASA. So this year we're celebrating our 40th anniversary of Viking, our first probe to land on Mars. And Viking was named appropriately to convey the idea of nautical exploration, to convey the impression of going to great distances and remote lands. In 2012, we landed another rover, the Curiosity rover. It's about the uh, size of a small car, starts up every day, and makes another trek across the planet. So it collects information on climate, geology. In 2020, we will launch our next rover. And the cool thing about the 2020 rover, it's going to have microphones and special cameras. So when we descend on the planet, we can record the whole thing. That's going to be super cool. But all of these missions are unmanned. So what's it going to take to send a human to Mars by 2030? Is BNNT going to be enable that journey? Is BNNT going to have those properties that can help go through the atmosphere and have a lightweight vehicle and a structure? So in order to reach new heights on Mars, we need to go, land, live, and return. So to get there, we need lightweight vehicles. We need thermal protection systems. So we see that, it, that BNNT is lightweight, it's strong, it withstands the heat. We know it's good for radiation, so when we build our habitats, we can protect the astronauts inside from the cosmic rays, the neutrons, the solar particles. My day job might be outside the habitat, so when I go out, I want a suit. If I can make BNNT fabric, so I can make a suit that's flexible, it's lightweight, going to be protected from the radiation. And I might have to go off, do an experiment, maybe build something. So I want my lightweight vehicle to help get me there. So go, land, live, and we're back. Gone back through the atmosphere. This is our prototype capsule. Survives very well. Those are many, many applications for space that we, that we try to develop. What about aeronautics. So if I can make BNNT fabric, then I can make BNNT composites and they can be useful for hot parts on airplanes. So leading edges are hot on airplanes and engine parts are hot. The average 747 has over 100 miles of wire. So BNNT is an insulator, it's good for insulation. So if I can make BNNT insulation, I can save a lot of weight. And if I save a lot of weight, I need less fuel, I can go farther distances, less fuel is good for the environment. So this is good. If you're flying at high altitudes, BNNT can protect you from the radiation, also protect the instruments from the radiation. So these are all good for what NASA needs. NASA needs aeronautics and space applications. But NASA wants to take all this good technology that they develop and transfer it to others because maybe there's other things beyond going to space or flying in airplanes that BNNT can do. So we look to transfer the technology to industry or universities or partners or small businesses. And so then we can say that BNNT serves the NASA mission, but it can also serve other missions like firefighters. So we know BNNT survived the propane torch, didn't burn, didn't char. Again, if we have a fabric, the fabric is flexible, I'm lightweight, I can withstand the heat. So there's a better chance that the first responders have more protection going in, because the last thing you want to do is second guess your protective gear and if you're in a hazardous situation. So currently, 25% of the world is experiencing water shortages. So we're running out of pure water, so we need to find other solutions. How about seawater? So remember the BNNT mat that had the millions and millions of bundles. So if we can use the BNNT mat as a filter, and they're already researching this, then we can remove the salt, so desalination, we can remove the heavy minerals, we can remove contaminants. We can do this in space, we're already starting to do this in space. 
Remote places, BNNT can be a filter because it's got excellent water permeation. So how many people know someone who has cancer? And how many people know someone who survived cancer? And how many people lost a friend or a loved one to cancer? So BNNT has the potential to help both diagnose cancer and for cancer treatments. So for cancer diagnostics, we can have the boron nitride nanotubes, have B11, we can convert those to carbon 11, and carbon 11 acts as a tracer or a tag. And so when we go through the chemical um, diagnostics, then we can identify those cancer cells much more efficiently in the conversion when the BN BNNT boron 11 converts to the carbon 11, and it does it much more efficiently, making the diagnostics much better. For cancer treatments, we can have the BNNT attach to the cancer cell, and we know they absorb neutron radiation, and so that helps to destroy the cell much more readily, plus it's not destroying the good cells. So it's targeting those cells that the BNNT is attached to. We've talked about BNNT, how it's made. We can make tubes, we can make yarn. From yarn is going to come fabric, from fabric is going to come big structures. We still need to do a lot of research, but we're on our way. We're working at this. And the good thing about all of these things is when a material, so BNNT is new to the game, but as I developed this material and as all the people around the world working with us develop these materials, when it becomes better than something that's we're using, then we can infuse it in. And then BNNT can be in the next space vehicle or the next firefighter suit. So where I'm from, NASA Langley Research Center, next year we're celebrating our 100 year anniversary. Can you imagine 100 years of new science, new discovery, new innovation? That's a long time to be a laboratory, very exciting that we're this laboratory that was specially designed for solve practical problems and come up with solutions for everyone. So as you look at the video, I want you to envision BNNT into these current things that we're using. Envision BNNT being in the next thermal protection system or the next unmanned air vehicle or the next planet system or concept that's going beyond Mars. So. <laughs> At NASA Langley, I develop inflatable heat shields for spacecraft that will allow us to reduce the cost of sending things to space and even let us land humans on Mars. I test space capsules so astronauts can land safely in the ocean. I imagine, then engineer far out missions to explore the solar system and beyond. At NASA Langley, I create systems to make machines smarter so they can act independently, even in outer space. At NASA Langley, I use robots to design lightweight, energy efficient structures for air and spacecraft. At NASA Langley, I design systems that allow small satellites to link themselves together to allow more flexible construction in space. At NASA Langley, I build instruments that monitor and track the recovery of the ozone layer from the International Space Station. I study how accurately we need to measure clouds from satellites to get a better idea of how climate is changing. So we can make smarter and more cost-effective decisions about climate change. I fly airplanes to improve aviation technology and climate science. I test wind tunnel models at NASA Langley to design planes that are quieter, more fuel efficient, and produce fewer emissions. At NASA Langley, I develop environmentally friendly electric aircraft that are going to transform aviation.
So I'd like, all of, I'd like to invite all of you to be part of our next 100 years, next 100 years of new science, new discovery, being part of something that's bigger than yourself, being part of inspiring the next generation of children and young adults and all of us to be, try to make that contribution and, and advance the technology. Um, we hope that BNNT will be part of our next 100 years to reach for new heights and reveal the unknown for the benefit of all humankind. Tusen